This is the Genie S125. Those who intend to use any machine with characteristics of weight, height, width, length or complexity, which differ significantly to the training they have received, should ensure that they receive a familiarisation to cover the differences. It is the employer's responsibility to ensure that all operators using equipment are adequately trained and familiarised to comply with current health and safety legislation. Machine specific familiarisation should follow on from basic training and cover the manufacturer's instructions and warnings, features of the specific model, control functions, safety devices and emergency lowering procedures. All of the above are to be found in the operator's manual supplied with the machine. Maximum height when stowed 10 foot 1 inches or 3.1 meters. Maximum horizontal reach 81 foot or 24.7 meters. The width of the machine with the axles retracted is 8 foot 2 inches or 2.5 meters. The width of the machine with the axles extended is 11 foot or 3.35 meters. The length of the machine when stowed is 46 foot 9 inches or 14.2 meters. The platform rotation is 160 degrees. The platform is self leveling. For the weight of the machine, please refer to the serial number on the chassis of the machine. The maximum platform height is 125 feet or 38.1 meters. The maximum working height is 131 feet or 40.1 meters. Maximum horizontal reach 81 foot or 24.7 meters. The range of motion chart will show you the height and reach that the machine is capable of achieving. This will sometimes be referred to as the operating envelope. The maximum platform capacity is 227 kilograms. The maximum occupants is two people. The maximum allowable manual force on the machine is 400 newtons or 90 pounds. Do not raise the boom when wind speeds may exceed 28 miles per hour or 12.5 meters per second. If a malfunction is discovered, the machine must immediately be isolated, tagged and removed from service. Locate the thorough examination certificate, ensuring that the machine is within its last six monthly date. Be sure that the operator's safety and responsibilities manuals are complete, legible and in the storage container locked in the platform. Decals are located around the machine. Familiarise yourself with the different decals ensuring that you understand items such as safe working load, wind speeds, floor loadings, crushing points. Check for hydraulic oil leaks and proper oil levels. Check for battery fluid leaks and proper fluid levels. Check for engine oil leaks and proper oil level. Check the following components or areas for damage, improperly installed or missing parts and any unauthorised modifications. Electrical components, wiring and electrical cables. Hydraulic hoses, fittings, cylinders and manifolds. Drive and turntable motors and drive hubs. Wear pads. Tyres and wheels. In the tyres there will be a bolt. This denotes that the tyre is a foam filled tyre. Engines and related components. Rotation sensors. Steer and axle sensors. Alarms and beacons. Nuts, bolts and other fasteners. Platform entry mid rail. Lanyard anchorage points. Ensure that you are wearing the correct personal protective equipment. Square end tyre, blue arrow. This will correspond with the arrows on the chassis of the machine. Circle end tyre, yellow arrow. Ground controls, boom. Platform, jib boom.
lanyard anchorage point, sliding mid rail, manual storage container, foot switch, platform controls, ground control, number one function buttons, four engine speed select button, five LCD screen control buttons, six fuel select button, seven LCD readout screen, eight red emergency stop button, nine glow plug button, 10, key switch, three positions, off, ground, and platform. 11, engine start button. 12, auxiliary power button. 13, high speed function enable button. 14, low speed function enable button. 15, alarm. The platform control panel controls. Number one, platform rotate switch. Two, platform level switch. Three, platform not level indicator light. Number four, machine not level indicator light. Five, retract boom indicator light. Six, raise boom indicator light. Seven, horn button. 8. Generator button with indicator light. 9. Auxiliary power button with indicator light. 10. Glow plug button with indicator light. 11. Engine start button with indicator light. 12. Engine idle RPM select button. High idle, low idle, Foot switch activates the high idle. 13, fuel selector button. 14, fault indicator light. 15, low fuel indicator light. 16, check engine indicator light. 17, red emergency stop button. 18, power indicator light. 19, proportional control handle for drive function and thumb rocker for steer functions. 20. Platform overload indicator light. 21. Steer mode select buttons with indicator lights. 22. Drive select button. This has two functions, machine on incline, machine on level surface. 23. Proportional control handle for boom extend and retract function. 24. Extend axle button. 25, retract axle button. 27, drive enable button with indicator light. 28, proportional control handle for boom up and down and turntable rotate left and right functions. 29, jib boom up and down toggle switch. The function tests are designed to discover any malfunctions before the machine is put into service. You must follow the step-by-step -step instructions to test all machine functions. If a malfunction is discovered, the machine must be immediately tagged, isolated and removed from service and reported to your manager. After any repairs have been completed, the operator must perform a pre-operation inspection and full function test again before putting the machine into service. Hydraulic ramping. Your machine may have hydraulic ramping built into it by design. This means that the machine may not stop immediately when a controller is released. Before carrying out your function test, select a test area that is firm, level and free of any obstructions. If this is not the case, report to your supervisor or manager and have the machine moved to a more suitable location. To start the engine, turn the key to the ground control position. Ensure that both the platform control and the ground control red emergency stop buttons are pulled out to the on position. The LCD screen should now light up and display no error messages. 
In cold conditions, push and hold the glow plug button for 10 to 20 seconds before starting the engine. Once you have done this, then press the engine start button. Allow the machine to start up and warm up. To test the emergency stop, push in the red emergency stop button to the off position. The engine should now turn off and no functions should operate. Pull out the red emergency stop button and restart the engine. Testing the extendable axles. To test the extendable axles, this test should be carried out with the axles in the retracted position. At the ground controls, push and hold one of the function enable speed select buttons and push the boom up button. The boom should raise to 10 degrees above horizontal and then stop. The boom should not raise above the limit switch until both axles are fully extended. Push and hold the function enable button and press the boom extend button. Because the axles are not extended, the boom should not extend. Now push and hold the function enable speed select button and push the boom down button. The boom should now return to the lower stowed position. Now turn the ground control key to the platform controls. Climb into the platform using the mid entry gate Attach your lanyard and carabiner in accordance with any risk assessments and safe systems of work. Start the machine using the starting procedure and then move the drive control handle in the direction and at the same time push the axle extend button. The machine should drive and the axles should now extend. Please note the indicator light will flash while the axles are moving and stay on when the axles are fully extended. Now return to the ground controls. Turn the key back to ground control, push and hold the function enable button and push the boom up and down button. The boom should now raise and lower normally. Now hold the function enable button and push the boom extend button and boom retract button. The boom should now extend and retract normally. To test the function enable button, try and lift the machine, lower the machine or extend and retract. As the function enable button is not pressed in, no boom and platform functions should operate. Press and hold the function enable button and activate each boom and platform function button. All boom and platform functions should be operated through a full cycle. The descent alarm should sound while the boom is lowering. Testing the tilt sensor. Push one of the LCD screen buttons until turntable level sensor X direction appears. The LCD screen should now display the angle in degrees. Push one of the LCD screen buttons until turntable level sensor Y direction appears. The LCD screen should display the angle in degrees. Push one of the LCD screen buttons until platform level sensor degrees appears. The LCD screen should display the angle in degrees. Testing the operating envelope. Simultaneously push and then release the LCD buttons shown to activate status mode. Push one of the LCD screen buttons shown until boom angle is displayed. Raise the boom and observe the LCD screen. The LCD screen should display less than 10, greater or equals to 10, greater or equals to 50, greater than 65. Push one of the LCD screen buttons until boom length is displayed. Ensuring that the area is clear, Extend the boom and observe the LCD screen. The LCD screen should display at 0, greater than 0, greater than 80, equals 100, greater than 100. Now retract the boom.
At the ground controls, turn the key switch to platform control. Climb into the platform and attach your carabiner to the anchorage point provided by the manufacturer. Push in the platform red emergency stop button to the off position. The engine should turn off and no function should operate. Pull out the red emergency stop button and now restart the engine. At the platform, test the tilt sensor alarm. Push a button such as the engine RPM button. The alarm should sound at the platform control. This indicates that the tilt sensor alarm is working in the platform. You will notice in the platform there is a foot switch. Push in the red emergency stop switch to the off position. Now pull out your red emergency stop button but do not start the engine. Press down on the foot switch and attempt to start the engine. As your foot is on the foot switch the engine should not start. Take your foot off the foot switch and start the engine. To check the function of the foot switch, do not press down on the foot switch and test each machine function. As your foot is not pressed on the foot switch, no functions should operate. To test machine functions, ensure that your foot switch is fully pressed down and activate each machine function control handle, toggle switch or button. All functions should operate through a full cycle. Steering controls are controlled on the thumb rocker switch on the proportional control handle inside the platform. Your machine has four modes of steering. Square end, blue arrow steer. Circle end, yellow arrow steer. Crab steer. Coordinated steer. Ensure you cycle through all modes of steering to ensure that the steering select is working correctly. Carry out this procedure as identified in the function tests contained in the operating manual. Test drive and braking. Press down the foot switch and slowly move the drive steer control handle in the direction indicated by the blue and yellow arrows. The machine should now move. The brakes must be able to hold the machine on any slope it is able to climb. When bringing the drive controller back to the centre position, the machine will come to a stop. Test the drive enable system. Press down the foot switch and lower the boom to the stow position. Rotate the turntable until the boom moves past one of the circle end tyres. On the control panel, the drive enable indicator light should now illuminate while the boom is anywhere in that range shown. Now try to move the drive steer control handle off centre. No drive function should operate. Push and hold the drive enable button and slowly move the drive steer control handle off centre. The drive function should now operate. Use the colour coded directional arrows on the platform control and the drive chassis to identify the direction of travel. Please note if the drive steer control handle is not moved within two seconds of pushing the drive enable button, the drive function will not operate. Test limited drive speed. From the platform, press down the foot switch. Raise the boom to 10 degrees above the horizontal. Now slowly move the drive control handle to the full drive position. As we are now in the elevated drive or limited drive speed function, the maximum achievable drive speed with the boom raised should not exceed one foot or 30 centimeters per second. If the drive speed with the boom raised or extended exceeds one foot or 30 centimeters per second, immediately tag isolate the machine and remove the machine from service and report to your manager. Raise the boom to the horizontal position. Extend the boom as far as it will go. Now slowly move the drive control handle to the full drive position. The maximum achievable drive speed with the boom fully extended should not exceed 0.6 feet or 18 centimeters per second.
Testing the platform auxiliary controls. Shut off the engine and pull out the ready emergency stop button to the on position. Now press down the foot switch and simultaneously press and hold the auxiliary power button and activate each function toggle switch or button. All boom and steer functions should operate. To conserve battery power, test each function through a partial cycle. To test the auxiliary controls, turn the key switch to ground control and shut the engine off. Pull out the red emergency stop button to the on position. Simultaneously push and hold the auxiliary power button and push each boom function button or toggle switch. All boom functions should operate. To conserve battery power, test each function through a partial cycle. Operating envelope indicator lights. The operating envelope indicator lights will come on to notify the operator that a function has been interrupted and an action is required by the operator. Raise the boom indicator light flashing. To continue extending the boom, raise the boom until the indicator light is off. Retract the boom indicator light flashing. To continue lowering the boom, retract the boom until the indicator light is off. Machine not level indicator light flashing. The tilt alarm will be sounding when this light is flashing. Move the machine to a firm level surface. Platform not level indicator light flashing. The tilt alarm will be sounding when this light is flashing. The platform level toggle switch will only work in the direction that will level the platform. Level the platform until the indicator light is off. Platform out of level P22 code. Bypass key position to be used to level the platform if the ground control display shows the platform out of level and the platform level controls do not work and P22 is indicated in the LCD. To operate, turn the engine off at the ground controls. Turn the main key switch to the ground control. Open up the canopy and remove the key from the main key switch and insert the key into service bypass. Turn the key once down into P22 position. Now using the emergency power, operate the platform level button to level the platform. Turn the service bypass key switch to the run position, remove the key from the service bypass and insert the key back into the main key switch. Push in and then pull out the red emergency stop button. If the P22 code is still visible, tag and remove the machine from service until the fault has been corrected by a qualified service technician. To secure the machine, ensure that the machine is fully lowered, both emergency stops are fully in and the key is turned to the off position and removed to isolate the machine. Contained within the black box, you will find the instructions for the use of the Genie OPA. Please read the manual thoroughly before using the operator protective alarm. Users should seek to minimize the risks of entrapment or crushing when devising a suitable method statement for any particular job, but particularly if working close to overhead structures. Before using the MUP each day, the operator should check the OPA system to ensure there are no visible signs of damage to any part of the system. After starting the MUP up, the OPA will automatically test itself. If functioning correctly, the MUP will start as normal. If not, the OPA will emit an SOS signal, which is three long beeps and three short beeps, and the MUP will not start. Please note, if this SOS signal is sounding, the MUP must be isolated, tagged, and reported to your supervisor. The OPA is automatically enabled when the operator's foot is placed on the foot pedal and it is disabled when the foot is removed. The operator should note that the MUPE's lift capacity will be reduced by the weight of the OPA. This is 8 kilograms in total. The OPA is activated by pressure on a sensitive strip. 
If pressure is applied to the sensitive strip, the mute functions will stop immediately and the alarm will sound intermittently. If the operator is able to remove the pressure, they can then reset the OPA using the blue reset switch and then restart the MUPE and continue working as normal. If pressure is applied to the sensitive strip for more than 10 seconds, the alarm will change to a continuous sound indicating to those on the ground that the operator may need to be rescued.